In this video, we're going to talk about FIFO, which means first in, first out. And FIFO is what we call an inventory costing assumption. And what we mean by that is that when we have a certain number of units that we've purchased, so we have our inventory over here, and we actually go and make a sale of that inventory, uh, we sell some of it, uh, then we have to decide, okay, which units are we actually going to place uh, in the cost of goods sold? And which, in, uh, which units are going to end up in ending inventory? And this will be a little bit easier to understand in the context uh, of an example. So let's say that you have a t-shirt uh, company. You sell custom t-shirts. And, and let's say that you end up selling uh, 250 t-shirts. You sell 250 t-shirts. Now this is all the exact same type of t-shirt. So you sell 250 of your, your best-selling t-shirt and that t-shirt is exactly the same. All 250 are exactly the same. So you look in your, your inventory, you look at your purchases of all the t-shirts that you have and you have to say, okay, well now how do I compute my cost of goods sold? And what's my ending inventory, EI, going to be? Because look, you've purchased, here's the, here's the amount of units that you've purchased. You've purchased, you purchased 200, then 150, and then 225 on three different dates. So you have to go ahead and say, okay, well, I've sold now 250 shirts, but I, I've got a lot more that I've actually purchased than 250. So which 250 uh, did I sell? Because I sold them, or I bought them, excuse me, at different prices, right? The ones that I bought on March 1st, I bought 200 t-shirts for $10 each. And then on March 16th, I went and bought 150 shirts for $12. So now I have to say, okay, well now that I've sold these t-shirts, right, you remember we're going to be making an entry, a journal entry about cost of goods sold. Uh, we're going to be reducing our inventory. We've got to do these different things, but we don't know which of these units it was that, that is comprised in this 250. If we did know, if we knew specifically which 250 we sold, we could use what was called the specific identification method and say, okay, here are the ones that, that we sold on these dates and this is what they cost. But you know, when we buy our when we buy our t-shirts, when we got our purchases, let's just say we take all these t-shirts and we just throw them in one big pile. So we just got one big pile of inventory. And so when we sell the 250, we don't know which ones they were that we actually sold. It could have been any of these. So that's why we make an assumption. We make a cost flow assumption to tell us which units we're going to assume it, it, that actually help us compute cost of goods sold and the ending inventory. So in this case, because we're using FIFO, let me just scroll down a bit, because we're using FIFO, we're going to say first in, first out, and well, what does that mean? That means that the first units purchased are going to be the first ones that go to cost of goods sold. So we sold, we sold 250. So the first in, what are the first in? Well, March 1st. Those are the first units we purchased. The first in are going to be the first out. So these are going to go to cost of goods sold. All right. So we got 200 units there. But we've still got we've still got an R50 we need to account for. So what do we do? We say, okay, well, out of this 150 that we've got here, 50 of those units are also going to go to cost of goods sold. So we've got 50 here, and then we've got the full 200 here are all going to be cost of goods sold, right? So the first units we purchased are going out. So let's compute our cost of goods sold now. We've got this 200, because those were the first in, they're going out now, and the price per unit was $10 uh, a t-shirt, so we're going to have 200 times $10. But remember that we sold 250 t-shirts, and this is just 200, so we had to take another 50 out of here, out of that March 16th purchase. So we go with a 50 from that date, and then we multiply that by the twelve dollars. Okay. So now this is going to give us so we've got two thousand here and then we've got six hundred 
This is 600. So that gives us 2,600. So that would be our cost of goods sold under the FIFO costing assumption. But now we have to say, okay, well, what, what would be the ending inventory? Let me just write it over here, a little more space. Ending inventory, right? Well, if we looked at the balance sheet after this, after this all took place, what would the balance sheet show as our inventory? I'll just, I'll just change colors here. So now we say, okay, well, we, we already took 50 out of here, right? So that, that really leaves us now, in terms of ending inventory, we're going to have 100 there, right, and ending inventory. And this whole 225, we didn't mess with that, right? That didn't go to cost of goods sold at all. So all 225 of those units are also going to be in ending inventory. So we've got the 100 that we didn't uh, put to cost of goods sold here, and then we got the 225 uh, that, that we didn't touch. So just bring that down. Now we'll do the calculations for ending inventory. So we've got the 100, and now we look what price do those go at. Well, they we bought those at $12, $12 a unit. So now we're going to have that times 12. And then we've got the 225. So those 225 units, what price did we have per unit on that? We had 16. So we're going to multiply those those 225 by the 16. And that's going to give us, what we have here, we are going to have 1,200 is from this portion. And then we've got 3,600. 3,600 from the bottom. And so that's going to give us that's going to give us 4,800 will be our ending inventory. Now, just one final note: in a period of rising prices, which is what we have here, right? We have over time the price we're paying for the shirts is is getting more expensive, right? It went from 10 to 12 to 16 dollars, and that often mimics the real world where we have rising prices, right? There's inflation. And so in such cases, FIFO doesn't do a good job uh, matching current revenue with current costs because the things that are going to cost of goods sold under this FIFO uh, inventory costing assumption are the first units, right? So this, when we actually got the cost of goods sold here, it's including mostly these $10, $10 units, right, from the beginning because that's first in, right, first in, first out. But the price we're actually paying, the most relevant price, the price that's uh, what we have to pay for shirts right now around the time where we actually uh, make the sale, the current cost uh, is actually most recent cost is, is quite a bit more expensive, $16. So in this case, because there's rising prices, uh, FIFO doesn't do the best job uh, matching the, the sales price uh, with what the, the current price to purchase the T-shirt would be.